Well, good morning to you all. I'm Rolly Stahl. I get to be your pastor, and it's my joy to share God's Word with you today as we talk about deepening our relationships through communicating warmth. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. You are the teacher, but you're also the one who shapes and moulds us to be more like Jesus. So do that in us and through us today. In his name, amen. Story. Uh, Jack and Doris were about to celebrate their 40th wedding anniversary. For a whole bunch of years, uh, Doris couldn't remember the last time Jack told her that he loved her. And when she asked him about it, he said, Well, I told you on our wedding day that I loved you, didn't I? (laughs) Yes, she replied. Well, if I ever change my mind, you'll be the first to know. (laughs) Question. How do you reckon Doris felt about his reply? Not good? I think she would have been disappointed. Poor old Jackie, he's not too bright emotionally about his wife's needs, is he? What could he have said that would have been better? Can you suggest something? All right, I love you, Doris, as much as I loved you on the day we were married. Fantastic. That'd go a lot better, wouldn't it? I mean, he could have had a short one. Oh, well, of course, Doris, I love you. Or he could have said, well, Doris, for 40 years I've loved you, and just as I promised on our wedding day, I'm going to keep on loving you. I reckon that would have gone down a lot better. Yes? Yes? Okay, I've got a couple of things for us to chat about. Next slide. Why do we find it so hard to tell people that we love them, appreciate them, or how much they matter to us or mean to us? And then the second one, at a funeral, why do we often wish we'd said more to that person about how we feel about them? Let's look at the first one. Why is it hard? Why is it hard to tell people that we love them? Well, it can be emotional, and I think that's... Heart of it, surely. Like, oh, if I get emotional, it might embarrass me, or or it might embarrass the other person, perhaps. Any other reasons? Okay, makes you vulnerable. That's right, because you might be putting it all out there for them, but they might say nothing, or they might say, "Oh, that's interesting." It's one of those. Did anybody say KFC moments? Isn't it? You know. All right, let's go to the next one. At a funeral, sorry. At a funeral, why is it we wish we'd said more? It's too late. Yeah, it's too late. You can't go back in time. We're going to come to that idea later on in this message. Right. I suspect one reason we find it hard to share those warm and tender feelings is because we're just plain chicken. You know, we're afraid of embarrassing ourselves. We're afraid of what might happen afterwards. Question, how long has it been since you actually told another human being, I love you? Parents, when did you last tell your child or children, I love you? I'm proud of you. I love being your dad. I love being your mum. Children, when did you last say say to your mum and dad, I love you, mum? I love you, Dad. Did you say it to them on their birthday or on Mother's Day or Father's Day or did you just write it in a card? Both. Fantastic. Top of the class, Alex. Husbands, is it your wife that always initiates I love you to which you say me too? (laughs) Or even worse, ditto. Wives. When did you last tell your husband why you love or appreciate or respect him? When's the last time you told your closest friends why you enjoy their company? Last week we talked about removing the masks and being real. Today we're going a step further. Today we are exploring creative and fun ways that we can share our warm thoughts and feelings with the people who matter to us. And a bit like remembering names. Now, some of us go, oh, I'm hopeless at remembering names. 
well, hang on, you can all get better at it. And I think this is another one of those things that no matter where you're at with this at the moment, we can all get better at it by the grace and mercy of God, yes? Because I think God wants us to be equipped to build into relationships. Right. One reason we find it hard to declare those sorts of things is because we are not yet fully realising the magnitude of God's love for us. Friends, do you know that God loves you? Can you accept and receive the fact that God loves you? Always has, does now, and will always love you. That's never, ever, ever going to change. God loves you. Always has, always will. God the Father, he loved you and chose you to be his even before he created the world. Think about that. Before you were even born, the Father's heart was doting over you as he watched you with tenderness and love. Psalm 139 says this, for you, for you knit me together in my mother's womb. When I was woven together, your eyes saw my unformed body. Oh God, you were watching me. Even before I saw light of day, you were watching me. Out of love for you, Jesus gave up his perfect life to take the blame for all your mistakes and failures. So now you are forgiven and you are his forever. Out of love for you, Jesus rose again, so you now have the hope of eternal life. Out of love for you, the Holy Spirit has opened your heart to receive Jesus and follow him. Out of love for you, the Holy Spirit enables you to put off that dysfunctional stuff that destroys relationships and equips you to bear the fruit of the Spirit which builds relationships. And a large chunk of building relationships is the words we speak, our tone of voice and our body language. Yes? Yes? By communicating warmth to the people who matter to us, we are appreciating them, thanking them and building them up. Instead of taking them for granted, we are sharing how they have been a gift and a blessing in our lives and friends who of us doesn't want to hear that? Who of you doesn't mind hearing that you've made a positive difference in someone else's life? We all do, don't we? All right. Five creative ways to communicate warmth. First is dare to declare. You know, people cannot guess or read your minds. Nobody can except God, yes? So... If you want other people to know your kind regards for them, you, uh, I'm going to dare you to declare. It requires a dare because, yes, there is an element of risk. You see, we all have thoughts and feelings about the people we are close to, but it's really easy to settle for shallow and superficial. I'll give you four examples. We say things like after some really good times together, oh, I'll see you later when perhaps we really could be saying, oh, I love you and I'm going to miss you until we meet again. Or we say something like, oh, it's been a good day. When perhaps what we really mean is, oh, I've really enjoyed your company today and the conversations we've shared. Or we say something like, I'm doing okay. When what we really mean is, oh, I'm really struggling and I'm fearful and worried and anxious about what lies ahead for me. Or we say, well done, when we really mean, hey, I really appreciate the thought and effort you put into the kids' talk this morning. See, when we settle for superficial, stuff stays shallow. If we want to go deeper, we've actually got to take the plunge and the dare to go a little bit deeper with the thoughts and feelings we share. Jesus does it in our Bible reading as he declares to his disciples, I love you. I love you just as the Father loves me. How does the Father love Jesus? Unconditionally, totally, eternally. 
I love you just as the Father loves me. Remain in my love. This isn't some wuss talking to a bunch of pristine saints with harps playing in the background. This is working class Jesus from Nazareth telling his blokes of his, of his heart towards them. It's Jesus, the Son of God, speaking man to man. Likewise, Paul, at, Paul um, tells his friends at Philippi, every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my request for all of you with joy. It's right that I should feel as I do about all of you, for you have a special place in my heart. You share with me the special favour of God. God knows how much I love you and long for you with the tender compassion of Christ Jesus. Can you see his, his love and longing to be with them again? And he hangs it all out there. Friends, if Jesus can dare to declare, if Paul can dare to declare, well, I submit to you that it's good enough for you and me. Amen? Number two, it is hard, so we need to make time and plan for it. If you want any relationship to deepen, you actually need to make time and space for it. It doesn't happen by automatic pilot. It requires some effort. Now, some of us might find words are hard to put together. If that's you, well, pray and think about it. And some people find it's a good um, practice to try and write something down because then you can massage it around to get the thing to say what you want to say. And once you know exactly what you want to say, then you've got to have a place where you can get together to share it, yes? So, if you're married, well, go on a date night or go away on a weekend, not just to share time, but to share your heart with each other. If you have dear friends, catch up over a meal or a cuppa or a walk and you could say to them, oh, look, I've been thinking about our friendship lately and... Um, I want you to know that, dot, dot, dot. I want you to know that I value how you listen to me. I want you to know that I appreciate your encouragement. I want to know that the words you speak to me make me think about things more deeply. Well, if you want to take the really easy option, you could text or phone someone and just say, hey, I want to know... I want you to know that I enjoy our friendship and thank God for you. There's the easy option. You can start with that one and then work on it. Whatever you appreciate grows in value. And if you appreciate friends through kind words and thoughtful actions, that relationship will appreciate and grow over time like money in the bank. Yes? Right. Warm fuzzies or short notes. Does anybody know what a warm fuzzy is? When I say warm fuzzy... All right. A warm fuzzy is a warm note of encouragement or affirmation that makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. Now, years ago, on Christian camps, the first activity they would do on the first day or night is they'd hand out manila folders and you'd decorate your own fuzzy folder and these would all be stuck up on the wall. You can see how good I am at art. That's, you know, that's about as good as it gets for me. And then kids would write little notes and they would put it in each other's fuzzy folders. In most of his letters, Paul actually sends his warm regards to the people he's writing to, but most of us don't have the time to write an epistle. But we've all got enough time to write a short little note. And these days with digital media, it's a lot easier. You can text, you can email, you can Facebook Messenger, or you can use WhatsApp, or Instagram, or TikTok, or Snapchat. You've got all those platforms and opportunities that you can just send a short note. And if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, you can actually write a note and then you can put it someplace where the other person's going to find it. You can put it in their lunchbox. You can put it under someone's pillow. You can put it in their shoe. You can put it to their shaving mirror. You can drop it in their pigeonhole at the church or drop something into their letterbox. It's really, really easy. It doesn't take long to do, but you know what? With a note, you can read it over and over again and that keeps bringing encouragement over and over and over. Now, friends... This got made 
for Christian Life Week in 1996. And I went through these last night and I just picked out a couple because even now when I read them, like 20 something years later, it still warms me inside. Rolly, it's good to see you again. Your talks are really hitting the spot. Have a great, great week, Justin. Dear Rolly, thanks for coming to the camp. You've answered a lot of questions and given us a lot to think about. Thank you from Sophie. Just lovely. Uh, to be appreciated. It puts wind in our sails. And if you don't know how to start, up on the screen there, I've got a few different examples of how you could start. Thank you for dot, dot, dot. You're special to me because dot, dot, dot. I really admire how you dot, 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 or you're an inspiration. See, there's a whole bunch of ways you can start the sentence. And most of us could probably finish one or two of those when we think about someone who matters to us. Yes? Okay, number four, share a prayer. When Paul writes, he often says he's praying for people, but sometimes he says, here's how I'm praying for you. When you receive a message like that, you know that someone values you enough, values you enough to bring you and your needs before the Almighty God. And it is incredibly encouraging. Here's what he writes to Timothy. Every time I say your name in prayer, which is practically all the time, I thank God for you. I miss you a lot, especially when I remember that last tearful goodbye and I look forward to a joy-packed reunion. This is Paul and his young entourage, Timothy, and I bet that put a heap of courage into Timothy's heart. Note also this example of Paul's prayer for the Philippians in chapter 1. So this is my prayer, that your love will flourish and that you will not only love much, but well. Learn to love appropriately. You need to use your head and test your feelings so that your love is sincere and intelligent, not sentimental. Gush! I love that. You know? So your love actually hits the spot in the other person's life. Years ago, I did a focusing leaders course with a bunch of other pastors. Uh, it was a journey of about 12 or 15 months. And one of the exercises we had to do was to work out our life story and then share it. And after each one did, the rest gathered around and laid hands on that person and prayed. Oh, it was a powerful time of blessing and refreshing. You see, when you pray for someone, you can't stay mad at them. When you pray for someone, the only thing you can do is love them. And when you pray, you thank God for that person. You bring their needs before the throne of grace and you commit them to God's keeping in their journey. It's through prayer that God releases his healing and his comfort and strength into people's hearts and lives. And it is a blessing. Yes? Number five, communicate warmth while you can. Friends, I've never regretted taking a moment to affirm or thank or appreciate someone, but there's been times of regret when I realised I haven't. There's going to come a time for each of us when it is too late. We need to think about our legacy and we need to keep sowing seeds of blessing into the hearts of people as often as we can. I don't want to die with my loved ones not knowing how I feel towards them. And I don't want to go to funerals where I failed to tell people what a gift and blessing they've been in my life. So I submit to you, far better to keep appreciating and thanking and blessing people while we can, yes? yes? To that end, I've got a story I'm going to share with you. It's from a book called uh, Manhood, an Action Plan for Changing Men's Life by um, Australian secular writer Stephen Bidoff. Just to set up the story. Many men will identify with the story of a man phoning his father long distance. The younger man is making an attempt to bridge the gap that has grown between them. 
father and son have had little contact in recent years and the son has been doing some thinking. When the father answers the phone, the son begins to try and tell him. Hi, Dad, it's me. Oh, uh uh-huh. Hi, son, I'll go and get your mother. (laughs) No, don't get mum. It's you I want to talk to. There's a pause then. Why, do you need money? (laughs) No, I don't need money. And the younger man starts on his somewhat rehearsed but still vulnerable speech. I've just been remembering a lot about your dad and the things you did for me. Working all those years to put me through college, supporting us. My life is going well now and it's because of what you did to get me started. I just thought about it and realised I'd never really said thanks. Silence on the end of the phone. The son continues. I want to tell you, Dad, thanks and that I love you. Dad's reply, have you been drinking? (laughs) Bit off um, comments further. Every father, how much he puts on a critical or indifferent exterior, will spend his life waiting at some deep level to know that his son loves and respects him. Everyone these days accepts that a parent has the power to crush a child's self-esteem. Few realise that a child in time holds the same power in reverse. Parents wait, however defensively, for their children to pass judgement. That's how life is. And then a bit later. The words, I love you, are cheap and easily said, which is part of the reason we hesitate to speak them. It's not the words that matter, but the message is important, however it is conveyed. Whether it is through a tone of respect, a liking for each other's company, a hug or a touch, you will find your own way. Eventually, though, to remove any doubt, You have to tell your father and your mother what you feel and all that you feel or else just go on fudging it. How's that for emotional insight? Those three words are not mission impossible. Jesus speaks them to you. I love you, just as the Father loves me. Remain in my love. As you keep soaking in the love of Jesus, then those words become a lot easier to speak. Maybe, maybe you can't say those exact words right now to someone you care about. But if it's what you mean, why not give it a go? or at least express what you are feeling in the warmest way possible. Do it today. Do it this week. Make a habit of it, sowing seeds of blessing into the hearts of people around you. Your children will respond to it. Your parents will be moved by it. Your spouse will be delighted in it. And your friends will love you for saying it. Amen. Amen. Lord, we've covered a lot of ground this morning, but it's real. And Lord, I pray today we wouldn't feel a heap of condemnation. But Lord, rather, your spirit stirring in us and releasing us into an adventure of freedom, an adventure where our words can bless other people on their journeys and draw us closer together.
For you are a God of relationships and you want us to experience better relationships than we have now. We want, you want us to share the character of Jesus and to shine that character into the lives of others. So Father, do that in us and through us by the power of your Spirit in his name. Amen.